Warning, folks, it's kind of getting hot in here. And given the fact that in London right now, we're at, what, 34 at the moment, destined to get higher and higher, I'm glad I'm actually working at home today. Uh, I've just, before I even start work, because it's late in the day, folks, I'm on a late shift. Uh, Nerdrotic, one of my favorite YouTubers out there, posted this tweet today, which got me very curious. Getting sexy over here. Rewind. <laughs> And it's regards to the New York Post. Now, interesting article. Who do we see that kind of takes the uh, real estate of this photo here? It is none other than Chris Pratt. And Chris Pratt has a few things to say about woke reviews. So why don't we just go on over to the actual link itself and check it out? Because I'll tell you what, this was pretty awesome. I enjoyed what I read. So the guy to credit for this article is Johnny Oleksinski. Um, amen, Chris Pratt. I'm sick and tired of whiny woke reviews too. What a dude. So let me just magnify this because I'm wearing my old sunglasses. Um, and you know what? I've got to say before I get into this article real quickly, two of my favorite shows on Amazon this year have been Jack Reacher, which has been awesome with Anna Richardson, and of course the Terminal List, which I had no idea would be the levels of badassery that it actually is. So Chris Pratt did something heroic this week. He exposed one of the media's most obnoxious trends, insufferable woke critics, when he trolled them on Instagram after getting bad reviews for his new Amazon Prime show, The Terminal List, which by the way, had something like, what is it, 2 billion or 21 billion minutes of streaming time? Um, I'm definitely gonna be adding to that very shortly because I'm gonna watch this show again and again. So just to send out the message that, you know, we like this kind of shit, not the kind of shit like Wheel of Time that nobody gave a crap about. His series was blasted by writers and media outlets such as The Daily Beast and Slate for being an unhinged right-wing revenge fantasy and an invitation to worship at the altar of the Navy SEALs. Yeah, the same Navy SEALs who the Americans' hard-earned tax money goes towards protecting their country. Yeah, I guess, you know, we shouldn't be worshipping at their altar. And, you know, we do have lady female Navy SEALs too, don't we? And they don't probably get enough as much praise as they ought to. Uh, Pratt shot back by sharing an article boasting about the show's, ah, oh, here we go, 1.6 billion minutes of streams good for him and of course the billion was done with a dr evil meme as well which i appreciated seriously what bowdoin class did these brainwashed lunkheads take strident pointless hollywood activism 101 additionally seemingly everyone lacerated the program for being too macho and too masculine oh my god what are we to do folks since when should an action thriller about Navy SEALs getting ambushed on a mission to kill a terrorist be sensitive and romantic and star Harry Styles in a kaftan? Yeah, because Harry Styles' inclusion, and I use that word quite uh, doggedly um, in the MCU, uh, it might be the reason why the Marvels is becoming a musical. Again, this is what Disney and Marvel do now. They see that DC and Warner Brothers have a unique idea for their Joker sequel turning it into a musical. The Marvel sequel is also going to be a musical. I guarantee it's going to be a disaster and I cannot wait. Go ahead Disney, go ahead Marvel, make my day. At this point, I don't care if Terminal List is worse than Netflix's Uncoupled. Never heard of it. The whiny, agenda-driven reviews of it are far more infuriating and tedious. Can't these people take off their democratic socialist caps for five friggin' minutes? I guess they can't. Uh, audiences, meanwhile, demonstrably have an appetite for entertainment about heroism and law enforcement. 
terminal list has an audience approval of 94% on Rotten Tomatoes. Top Gun Maverick about Navy pilots is one of the summer's biggest box office hits and in fairness, a critical one as well. CBS NCIS, which most critics have never watched in their lives, is the number one TV show in America after 19 seasons. Uh, the 2014 war movie American Sniper with Bradley Cooper all jacked up was ignored by a lot of the culturati initially, but overperformed during its opening week at the box office by about $40 million. Another example is 2020's Bad Boys for Life, starring Will Smith and Martin Lawrence as two fun, trigger-happy detectives gunning down a Mexican drug lord in bloody Mexico. Bloody and macho as hell, the movie made $426.5 million worldwide. And that was in a pandemic, folks, or before the pandemic really kicked in. Not everything has to be euphoria, you losers. And it's so true. I mean, people are saying that the terminal list has very bad acting. Uh, its messaging is very un-PC. Uh, and I hate using that phrase now. And you know what? Good. I'm glad people like Jack Carr, the author behind the terminal list, came out and attacked woke reviewers saying, hey, we didn't make this show for you guys. We made it for people like you and people like me. And someone like Jack Carr, who has protected his country, the USA, for many, many years, a total badass through and through. Would I want to take that guy out for a drink? Yeah. Would I like to give him an arm wrestle? I probably would. And I'll probably let him win, and then I'll just come back like a fist of fury and push his forearm down into the table. That is obviously a big joke, Jack Carr, but if you happen to watch this video, one day, sir, one day, I'd like to get in there, over the top like Sylvester Stallone, all oiled up to the nines, and let's have a couple of arm wrestles like men over a brewski or two. So, folks, if you enjoyed this very very surprising um, article from the New York Post, courtesy of this man, Johnny Oleksinski. Um, good article, really, I mean, credit to Johnny for doing that, awesome, awesome. I'm glad he's speaking out. Might trigger off the algorithm where more people come out and say, oh, you know what, we were absolutely wrong, but they won't give us the credit or people like Nerdrotic or uh, Heels versus Babyface or Geeks and Gamers. They're going to ignore those people because yeah, we didn't know what we were talking about, but in reality, we saw what was happening all along. It took me a bit longer to catch up, unfortunately, but hey, I can admit my mistakes. I know what I did wrong, and I know what I'm doing to correct all of that. So folks, if you enjoyed this quick review, sorry, a quick video uh, looking back at the, <laughs> the woke critics who hated the terminal list, but we love it, leave a like below, smash the like button, and if I were you, I'll check me out on the next video.